So, question seven. Um, this, we picked up marked at the start of this because we, we should have done, so show that dy by dx is that. Well, we know that that means we are going to begin by doing dx by dt and dy by dt. You didn't, you didn't get a mark for dx by dt. You, you just should have known that that was 2 cos t. Um, dy by dt, because that 2 is in there, if we differentiate cos 2t, it goes to minus 2 sine 2t. Because cos differentiates to minus sine. So minus 2 sine 2t. And 2 sine t goes to 2 cos t. So we have that. And then we know that dy by dx is that one divided by that one. So out of the marks that were available here, Um, to this point got you two, because that was one mark for getting dy by dt correct, and the second mark for recognising that you, to get dy by dx you do dy by dt divided by dx by dt. Now, the question was to show that question, show that this is 1 minus 2 sine t. So we've got to do something like this. We're back to our lovely core 3 trig identities again, aren't we? Um, notice our answer is a sine 1t. So this sine 2t here is something we're going to have to do something with. So let's, well we know that don't we? Two, uh, sine 2t is 2 sine t cos t. So that's minus 2 times 2 sine t cos t plus 2 cos t over 2 cos t. Um, we've got 2 as a common factor all the way through that, haven't we? So let's get rid of the 2. We've got, um, we've got cos t as a common factor, top and bottom. So we've got minus, uh, I'm going to write that again, minus 2 plus sine t, cos t plus cos t over cos t. We've now got a common factor of cos t all the way through, so we can divide top and bottom by cos t to leave us with minus 2 sine t plus 1. And that's what we were supposed to show, isn't it? So we get that there. It was all about that identity, the 2 sine t cos t identity. What's that, Matthew? You're right. say, and hence find the coordinates of the stationary point. So uh, that's divided by the x. Stationary point is when dy by the x equals 0. So minus 2 sine t plus 1 is 0. So sine t is a half. And of course we're differentiating with calculus, so we must be working in radians. Um, Actually, well, let's let's think this through. Uh, you can turn it into a, a, an angle, or you can just work out what's going on here, can't you? Because we've just got sine t equals a half. Well, um, cos 2t, is it worth doing it this I don't know. Turn, turn it into an angle and, and stick it in and do it that way. Or, no, we'll do that. I just think it gives us a nice insight into the next bit if, we, if we're a little bit neater with it. But inverse sine of a half, your calculator's going to say pi by 6. And so if we sub that in, x equals 2 sine t, so 2 times a half, which is 1 and y equals cos 2t plus 2 sine t, so cos 2t cos pi by 3. Plus the 1, that was the 2 sine 2t. That's a half. 
plus a 1 is 3 over 2, so the coordinate is the point 1, 3 over 2. There we go. Now, this is where it gets really interesting. Part 2 of this question. Find the Cartesian equation of the curve. That means eliminate t. And you had, you had two routes that you could go through this. One was a horrible and pleasant route that we talked about where we learned about this and said that we would try and avoid that because it just wasn't nice. And the other route was the neat, kind of mathematically elegant route. One route meant that it was almost impossible to score any marks in part three. The other route meant that part three was easy. So the way that, that as, a, as our mock exam, that lots of you did this, for part two, remember we've got x equals 2 sine t and y equals, I can't see the question, what was it? Cos 2t plus 2 sine t. Right, so we're not going to talk about this, this first method, which is how lots of you did it. Lots of you did it by saying that um, x over 2 equals sine t, so t equals the inverse sine of a half x. <coughs> At which point you then subbed t equals the inverse sine of a half x into the y equation to eliminate t and got an unpleasant looking Cartesian equation which went something along the lines of y equals cos of 2 times the inverse sine of a half x plus well, some of you put plus x, some of you even left that in terms of inverse <laughs> sine of a half x, which was a crazy thing to do, and didn't deserve any marks, but, um, but plus x. Now, if you did do that nasty looking thing with the inverse sine and a plus x, you got the three marks for doing it. I think that's outrageous, because it was horrible what you did. So what you should have done is tried to eliminate t in a, in a nicer way of eliminating t. Now look, there we have cos 2t, and here we've got something involving sine t. Cos 2t, we know identities about cos 2t, we love them. Cos 2a is cos squared a minus sine squared a. So if we put that all in terms of sine squared, that is 1 minus 2 sine squared a. Right. So sine a, in our context, is a half of x. Sine t is x over 2. So if sine t is x over 2, y equals 1 minus 2 sine squared x. 1 minus 2 x over 2 squared plus 2 sine t plus 2 sine t, which is x. And there is a massively nicer version of the Cartesian equation. Can you see what we've done? No. Let me, let me write another line first, because I, I did kind of miss out a little bit there. So what we said is that this y equation up here, y equals cos 2t is 1 minus 2 sine squared t plus 2 sine t. We've written it like that first. Happy with that? Yeah. And if sine t is x over 2, sine squared t is x over 2 squared. So it's 1 minus 2 x over 2 squared plus 2 sine t, which is x. How much nicer is that than what many of you wrote? I, you wouldn't have left it like that. You might have written it as y equals 1 minus x squared over 2, because that's x squared over 4 doubled as x squared over 2 plus x. OK. Now can you see the difference that that makes for the last part of the question, which says, state the set of values that x can take and hence sketch the curve. Okay? Now the set of values that x can take, well actually we, we should have got that. The question said t is between minus pi by 2 and pi by 2. is twice sine t. 
So as t goes from minus pi by 2 to pi by 2, the sine of t goes from minus 1 to plus 1, and x is twice that. So x goes from minus 2 up to plus 2. So there's one mark, and I missed it on yours, didn't you, John? But there's one mark for writing minus 2 up to plus 2. And now sketching the curve. I, I'm, I'm with you on this. The, the equation that most of you had for part 2, I wouldn't have fancied trying to sketch it. Which is why that was the equation to go with, because that is just a quadratic. It's a negative quadratic. Um, we, can, we can work out the shape of it, some of the values of it. We know where its, uh, its stationary point is. Didn't we find that? Yep, it's 1, 3, 2. 1, 3 over 2. So we're going from minus 2 to plus 2. We've got a quadratic that is y equals minus x squared over 2 plus x plus 1. So we've got a graph of crosses at plus 1. Has a stationary point at x equals 1, y equals 3 over 2. We could sub in some other values and see what happens with this. We know that, um, well, to start with, we know that if x is <coughs> if x is minus 2, then what have we got there? We've got, um, we've got minus 2 plus 2. No, minus 2 plus another minus 2 is minus 4 plus 1 is minus 3. So we're going from minus 3 when we start. If x is equal to 2, we've got, um, again, we've got minus 2 out of that bit, plus 2 is 0, plus 1 is 1. So we're only at 1. We've just got a quadratic curve that's doing something like that. And, uh, and that's it. That's what we should have ended up with. I think that's what I do here. There you go. So that's it. Um, stick in a few values and, and work them out and things like that. You see how it was impossible if you did it part two with the inverse sign in there. It's just really difficult to work out what's going on. But there, as a quadratic, it's quite nice.